When I survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died, my region.
Harbour Kids, it's so brilliant to be back with you today when you're watching this. I've heard some great stories of the hiding places that some of you found from the last time I did a prayer video when you went off to find a secret place to go and pray with God. I've also seen some great pictures. Abby, I loved your picture. It was so brilliant. Today, I want you to do the same thing. And in a minute, you can come with me, see if I can find a hiding place. When you go off to pray in your secret place, today, I want you to pray for your friends. Mary Jane and Joe have been talking about friendship and stories from the Bible about people who were friends with people and took them to Jesus. So I want you to take your friends to Jesus in prayer. This is what you're going to do. You're going to use your hand again to think five friends that you're going to pray for. One, two, three, four, five. Five friends. Now I'm thinking that you're going to choose some people that you love, that you're missing, and you can pray for them. But I've got a challenge for you. On your biggest finger, can you pray for somebody that's older than you? Pray for somebody older. It might be a grown-up or it might be someone in your family that's older than you. And when you are praying for the person that you're thinking about on your thumb, this is your challenge. I want you to pray for somebody that maybe you find it a little bit tricky to be friends with. Somebody that's not naturally a really close friend, somebody that you find it hard to get along with or somebody that maybe has hurt you because it says in the Bible to pray for them too. That's tricky but I want you to do it and I think that God will give you a heart of love for all the people that you pray for. So that's your challenge today. Go to a secret place, pray for five people, somebody older than you, somebody you find it hard to get on with and then some of your close friends and I want you to do that as many times as you can this week the Bible says keep praying for each other so let's do that this week right let's go and find some places where you might pray in your house I'm back in the bottom of my wardrobe this is my secret safe place to pray for my five friends I found a quiet space under my desk to pray for my five friends. I'm going into the under stair cupboard to hide behind the coats to pray for my five friends. I'm in the front garden next to my favourite roses to pray for my five friends. I've made a snuggly den under the cushions in the lounge to pray for my five friends. So. That's your challenge this week. Rather than just praying for yourself, which sometimes is what we find we do, your challenge is to pray for your friends. See you again. Have a great week. Savior, how great 
sing to my Savior. Gave your son to me, came to us. It blows my mind that on the cross you took the worst of me. All for love, you bled and died. So I will sing. To my Savior, how great you are. Yes, I will sing to my Savior, how great, how great you are. How great you are. Good morning. Good morning. We thought we'd do it a little bit different this week. We thought we'd start together, that we will have, we're going to attempt a conversation. We'll see what happens in this conversation. That was a good introduction. Some great songs being played there. I'm loving all the voices. Gareth, you've been looking at who's been chatting away this Oh, I'm morning, seeing people you? from all over the place on this morning. And uh, uh, of course, uh, we've got people from Tunbridge Wells, the Tylers, Claire Tunstead, the I'm just going to wave to you all while he says your names. 
Lots of those related to Josh and Anna. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Not all Speaking of, them. of Josh and Anna, um, have you seen, Gareth, have you watched, have you seen them on Facebook? Tents in the garden, like they're going at big style for big church I, I, I day out, weekend. I, I haven't really watched very much yet, but it's, I, it's I've impressive. seen pictures. It's impressive. I've got to say, impressive cartoons. Saw, You're going big time. So, um, yeah, well I, done. I well saw done a bit of e, Edie and Evan, Edie and Evan playing doing their, uh, something or other. Absolutely. I didn't have time to watch very much. So, so this weekend, of course, would have been big church day out, big church weekend out. And I think you can find loads of links um, if you look, because there's loads of stuff going out on YouTube, bands that you can watch. It's, it's all happening. So, um, so that's all really good. Anyone else on there, Gareth? Do you know Amy's on. Amy's on. She's, she's well, on. nearly on time for church. That's, that's pretty good. Sorry, Amy. He's rotten to you. Zach Tyler's on as well. Zach Tyler's on. I think okay. there's about six people in the same house that's in Tunbridge really cool. Wells, all on the all on street. Do you know, we really love um, often sort of behind the scenes while all the intro videos going on. We do like having a quick look to see who's on and who's chatting. So keep that going because that's just all the before church chat that's happening. Um, there are some birthdays, Gareth, that we need to... Celebrate. There are, and I'm sure you're going to tell me who they are. I am, because you won't have a clue. <laughs> and, and my worry is, because we're starting like five minutes earlier today, normally the intro goes on till, till sort of 25 2, doesn't it? So I'm hoping that these two people that I'm going to say are out of bed, because they're both teenagers. Well, in fact, one becomes a teenager today. So I'm hoping that they're out of bed, um, but if you're not, you'll just have to watch this later. So the two birthdays are... Um, Hang on, wait a minute, before oh, Aaron's commenting on my haircut. He doesn't say what he thinks of it, though. He just said, someone's had a haircut. It's true. I need to know, Aaron. What do you think? <laughs> what do you think of Gareth's haircut? <laughs> anyway, birthday, Sarah. Look, I think they want to know, did I cut your hair? I'm just going to leave that up to you to guess. <laughs> you know our marriage. You know how strong it is. You can see that there's, you know, lots of laughter going on between us. Did I cut his hair or not? Put your comments and see what you think. Birthdays. Um, yeah, Lily, Angie's beautiful Lily, George and Lindsay's granddaughter Lily, is 13 today. I can't believe, Lily, that you are 13 today. I remember you being born. I just can't believe that. Um, so we're going to say happy birthday to you, Lily, and hope that you have a fantastic day today. And the other one, Gareth, um, is Enya. And Enya is part of our youth work, and she turns 14 today. So happy birthday, Enya. Um, Sue and Orla, um, I know that you're watching. Um, so happy birthday. Celebrations in your house today as well. So should we do that right now before we move on to some other things? Is that all right, Dave? Can we sing? Yeah. Let's sing happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Lily and Enya. Happy birthday to you. Have a fantastic day. A fantastic day. Well, okay, Gareth, I know what I was going to say before we move on to the other things. Have you noticed that the white jeans have come out? It's a sign of summer. It's a yeah, sign of summer. There is never any moment where I would wear white <laughs> jeans. No. They would be dirty within five minutes. Can we not even go there? That's not, I just don't even want to, can we just not even go there? Let's not even consider that thought. I'm, I'm not enjoying that thought. I wish you hadn't said that. Are you with me? Are you with me? That's not a good thought, Gareth, in white jeans. Uh, Delete that. Delete it right now. Yeah, I know that summer has arrived when the white jeans come out the cupboard. So um, just, just thought I'd throw that one out. Any, any other yeah. comments, Gareth, on, um, your, on your haircut? Uh, does anyone Aaron think? likes my haircut, apparently. <laughs> Colin thinks I fell in front of a lawnmower. Nice one, Colin. <laughs> Just say it as it is. Don't hold back. Don't hold back. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone think that I cut your hair, though? That's the question. Uh, nobody's said, or well, at least I haven't seen that. You haven't, you haven't seen that? No. I, I tell you what, um, in terms of um, photos, and, and uh, there were some great pictures on Facebook this week of two couples that are in our church. Um, oh, yes. Who have celebrated their wedding anniversaries wedding this week? Wedding anniversaries. So we just couldn't resist showing you the pictures because I mean they're out there on Facebook. Look at this. You can might have we to have? Can we have a huge cheer? Come on, from home, a huge cheer for Dawn and Chris who celebrated their thirtieth wedding anniversary this week. I don't know what day it was. Was it Tuesday, Wednesday? I actually it was early in the week. It was early in the Monday, week. Tuesday, um, I, I love this photo. It is so cool. It is so cool. That was at it's, St. James's uh, Church in Tunbridge Wells. If you want to see that later, you'll have to go onto Dawn and Chris's yeah, feed yeah. and see yeah. it larger than that. Yeah. And Gareth, what I realised, I said this to Dawn in the week, um, we, out of their 30 years, we've known them for like 20 years of their 
married oh. life. So, so there we go. So anyway, congratulations. So zooming in so you can see. There we go. That's the photo. Let's have another cheer for Dawn and Chris. Yay! Another don't, big cheer. Don't zoom out too far. We've got another one to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. And um, so con yeah, go. here comes the other one. Look at this. This is Steve and Heather. What a stunning couple. Look there. Are we, are we getting that one in there? Yeah. Steve and Heather. Not, Steve. Quite, not quite 30 years. How many years, Gareth, for them? Uh, 10 years. 10 years this... this uh, 10 years? When was it? Friday? I think it was. Late in the week. Uh, yeah. Well done, you two. No, we always knew that Heather could, uh, could scrub up well, but Steve, I'm really impressed. <laughs> Sorry, Steve. He just We've seen, he I've just... seen Steve in his work clothes too much here recently. Is that so. what it is? Yeah, looking, <laughs> looking good. So listen, just congratulations. Isn't it great to be able to celebrate church family and, um, and that we can still do that online? Um, we are very much live Aren't we, Gareth? Like, very much live. Like, I, I, no, I don't know how many churches are live. Maybe we're like the only one now. I don't know. But we are very much live and present in the room, which means that all the mistakes. So earlier when we tried to do the, um, the what, what do you call it, the announcement, letting you know that we're on, you could just see me doing this, but there were no words coming out. We're having some sound issues this morning. So we're very much live, but we kind of like that. We like being present in the room with you. So, um, so that's pretty cool. Graham Tyler's been very rude about my hair. Oh, Graham. What are you saying? He says that Malachi cut it. <gasps> Malachi is his son who is blind, so uh, it's not that bad. Oh. I think, anyway, I think Malachi would do a great job. I think Malachi, would, I think Malachi would do a fantastic <laughs> job with the Clippers. Has anyone commented if I've cut it yet? This is the big question. Uh, Nobody has, have they? You're all being too polite. That's what you're. You're all being too polite at home. <laughs> um, so the final thing, um, before we're going to have some shout-outs this morning, aren't we? which is great. We're loving the shout outs that are coming in. And so please keep sending them. Um, we're going on a bit of a biscuit theme at the moment. Gareth, do you like biscuits? I prefer crisps, to be honest. I, I want to change the narrative here and turn it on to crisps and which is your best crisp. But that may be a couple of weeks away because I know that we've got lots of biscuits this week and we've also got lots of biscuits for next week as well because we couldn't fit them all in this week. What all so, the biscuits? <laughs> That was a bad joke. I don't even know what I'm waffling on about. We couldn't fit them all in. Anyway, so... <laughs> biscuits. Biscuits are my favourite thing. Um, do you remember a long time ago, um, I just had a memory of Josh Carter, you preached a sermon, Biscuits or Cake. Do you remember that? Do you remember that one, Gareth? And he did this whole thing. You remember it, Josh, don't you? Because you preached it. Um, biscuits or Cake. So, Gareth, what are you? Biscuits or Cake? If you had to make a decision right now, quick, oh don't think goodness. about it. Come on. Uh, Come on. It depends on the cake. No, that's not the answer to the question. <laughs> Biscuits well, or cake? I'd choose cake, I think, but it would have to be like a lemon drizzle cake or something. That's Why is he so difficult? Ask me the same question. Oh, I don't need to ask. It's biscuits. It's biscuits. <laughs> it's biscuits on the track. Right, I'm just going to do ask it. Me, if you ask me crisps or biscuits, it's easy. Crisps. Oh, okay. All right. This is okay. Right, I'm going to ask who's in the room. Dave, cake or biscuits? Cake. Oh, he was a bit quicker than Gareth, but not much. He was like... Uh, I'm uh, not too sure. Okay, we have two other people in the room helping us today. Solomon, biscuits or cake? Cake. Cake. He was quick. Lottie, biscuits or cake? Cake. 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 They're, they're sorted in their house, they're not they? It's cake <laughs> in our house. It's great because I get to eat all the biscuits, which is fantastic. So, Gareth, um, we are going to go to the shout out videos. And um, this is great fun. This is our way of just welcoming everyone. It's a way of just chatting. It's a way of seeing, um, yeah, different church faces. Because you might be a bit fed up of seeing our faces. I hope they're not, Gareth. Do you think they're fed up? Yeah, all right, Gareth, all right. Do you think they're fed up seeing our faces? I hope you're not fed up seeing our faces. Um, but it's I nice don't know to what to say about that. I know you don't. If I say yes, I know, it you'll, you'll be upset with me. I will be upset with you. So um, the shout-out videos are just a great way of just seeing other people. So enjoy. Grab your cup of tea and um, enjoy the shout-outs. In a recent survey, we asked, what's your favourite... Biscuit. Where is he? He's supposed to be emptying the shopping bags, but he's taken a long time. What are you doing? Mm. You're doing something. Are you eating the biscuits? Mm. You are. They're for Sunday. You're eating the biscuits. Well, Sarah said on Sunday she had this new cup with five biscuits in a holder and I thought what she meant was every time you have a cup of tea you could have five biscuits Sarah what have you started hi Harbour Church it's Karen 
just um, wanting to say hi and hope you're all well and keeping safe and loving the church online, the fact that we can gather together and just looking forward to when we can. Until then, keep safe and also biscuits. Um, I quite like a rich tea or a ginger nut. But then I suppose it depends on the occasion. Anyway, take care. God bless. Bye. Hi, everybody. Hope you're all OK. We're fine here. Glad to have a little bit more freedom. But look forward to seeing you all soon. Just having a little chill in the garden with a nice cup of coffee and a chocolate digestive. Can't say my favourite because all biscuits are my favourite. Bye. Hi, Hi Church. Church. Guys, just wanted to say thank you so much. Uh, we've missed you all. Um, and uh, to those of you that have made us dinners over the last few weeks, uh, we feel very blessed and, uh, and completely overwhelmed. And uh, Kieran misses you all. Um, and uh, just can't wait to get back together in church and, uh, and see you again. So uh, God bless you all and see you soon. Bye. 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 Miss you. Hello there everyone, it's Jim Lockie here, your Biscuit Daddy. And uh, I'm here to forage on the beach here. We're beach combing for biscuits, because I don't know about you, but I find in lockdown, sometimes when you forage for biscuits in the kitchen, you come up short and so you have to cast your net further afield. Now, here in this kind of sea biome, it's a really good place to forage for water biscuits. They can be a bit dry, but I really think, you know, when you get used to the taste, they are a superior kind of biscuit. Now, if you come here just when the tide's going out, you'll f often find a lot, because they're washed up from old pirate ships, sunken submarines, and that kind of thing during high tide. So if we have a look around on the floor here, maybe we'll find one. Well, look at this. A water biscuit washed up here and if we're lucky oh yes a little bit of cracked black pepper on there as well that is fantastic and it tastes <coughs> delicious hi everyone um i've just snuck out to the garden um just quickly to just say Again, thank you so much for all the meals we received. Um, it's been really overwhelming in a lovely way. Um, so helpful um, for us. And we really appreciate every one of you. And we're just, yeah, we're just overwhelmed by it, to be honest. It's, it's just been so, so helpful and so delicious as well. So thank you, all of you. Um, really really appreciate you all and we really miss you all and um, really look forward to seeing you all soon God bless bye it's it's been really overwhelming and so so great so helpful <coughs> Fantastic. That was um, just really good. And thank you, everyone, for your contributions there. Keep sending them in. And I'm looking forward to next week um, seeing more clips of, of biscuits. We are um, we're, we're going to worship Jesus together in a few moments. And um, it's just, already this morning, actually, as we've just been here and just, just going through some of the songs, there's just been a real sense of just God's presence with us. And our prayer is that as we worship together now, that, that you in your home will experience the love and the presence and the power of God. I, we really are praying that. That really is the, the cry of our hearts. And we believe that. We're hearing some wonderful stories. Just this week, heard a wonderful story from, um, I won't say who, but, but a lady that's on her own at the moment. And she just said to me that when she watches each Sunday, and especially when it comes to breaking bread, she just said there is something so powerful about breaking bread and knowing that we're doing it together. Well, I want to encourage you. Um, we're going to be doing that again this morning. You'll see I've got 
a roll here and, and, and some juice. And, and this is an important part of our Sunday morning gathering. I've said this before, we, we do it every time that we meet together. Because Jesus told us to, didn't he? He said, when you meet together, break bread and do it to remember me. So it's really integral to our worship as, as Harbour Church. And that's continued while we've been online. And we weren't sure how that would be, but actually I just think that God, through the power of his Holy Spirit, has just used these times to be really precious. I, I was reading this morning Romans 5, verse 6, and I want to read this verse over us. It speaks about the love of God. Let me just read it to you. When we were utterly helpless, Christ came at just the right time and died for us sinners. Now, most people would not be willing to die for an upright person, though someone perhaps might be willing to die for a person who is especially good. But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. And then, do you know, it goes on to say in verse 10 that our friendship with God has been restored because of Jesus. Why do we worship him? Why? Because he first loved us. He first loved us. Do you know, John, who was one of Jesus' disciples, referred to himself many times in his gospel as the one Jesus loved. And I've heard many preachers uh, tell this in quite a humorous way. And I understand that. You could almost think, John, you're being a little bit arrogant there. He keeps referring to himself as the one Jesus loved. And just yesterday, as I was thinking about that and reading some scriptures where he says that, I just saw it in a different light and I thought, I don't think he was being arrogant. I actually think he had such a revelation of the love of God that he was so secure in it that he just had to declare it. And, and I would love, and I'm going to pray right now, that as we worship and as we have this service together, this hour or so, that each one of us, I'm praying it for myself, would have a fresh revelation of the love of God for us, that we're able to say over ourselves, so I'm Sarah, the one Jesus loves. Wouldn't that be so liberating for us to be to say, I'm Sarah, well, obviously you put your name in, the one Jesus loves. And not to feel that that's an arrogance, not to feel that there's a superiority in that, but to say it with a confidence and an assurance. And, and, and that's what we want to happen for you in your home this morning. Would you allow me to pray before we worship together? Holy Spirit, you are the one who reveals truth to us. So my prayer is that each one of us in our homes, whether we are on our own this morning or whether we are gathered with family or we have friends around us um, who we are sharing a home with. Father, whatever situation we find ourselves in today, I ask you that through a work of the Holy Spirit, a miracle, each one of us would know that we are loved by God. And that in the same way that John, who wrote his gospel, referred to himself as the one Jesus loved because he knew it. I pray that we would be able to have the assurance that John had, that we are loved by God. We're loved by the creator of all things. So today, would you reveal your love to us? May that be our anchor point, our security. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to worship together and I want to invite you to join in. We're going to sing a couple of songs now, great songs. And we're grateful that, that Dave's here to lead us in that. So join with us, um, whether you want to remain seated in your lounge. You know, sometimes it might be you want to stand up. I don't know what works for you, but just join with us as we give honour to Jesus, our King, today.
down You're never gonna let, never gonna let me down You're never gonna let, never gonna let me down You're never gonna let Fulfill the law and prophets To a virgin came the word From the throne of endless glory To a cradle in the dirt Praise the Father Praise the Father Praise the Son Praise the Son
Fantastic. Do you know if we were if we were all together now I'd be going, come on, let's just raise some thanksgiving, clap, just cheer. What a great song. Praise forever to the King of Kings. I love that song. I love the words. I'm so tempted to say we'll sing it again, but we won't. We won't, okay. Um, I'm gonna just sit on that. But brilliant songs. Um, these songs, you know, throughout the week, why don't you listen to them? You can you, you can Google them, listen to them. That's Hill Song, King of Kings, and just fantastic the truth of what Jesus Christ has done for us. We're going to, um, we're going to break bread together um, now um, and slightly, slightly different this week in that Tim Bishop, who is part of our leadership team here at Harbour Church, he's going to lead us in breaking bread. And so earlier on in the week, he, he recorded this for us. Um, and I'm really believing that actually as we join with Tim now, this is going to be a really special moment. So... Um, I trust that, like me, you have something. I, I have a role here, but it may be that, do you know, even if it's just a biscuit, whatever you have, these are symbols that enable us to reflect and to pause and remember the death of Jesus. It is only by Jesus Christ that we are free. There is no other way. Your goodness will never be enough, but his goodness is always enough. So, Tim, thank you for leading us in breaking bread together today. As we come to this time of communion this morning, we're in a very strange time. Many of you will be sitting at home on your own in lockdown, isolating, and maybe have been self-isolating for many weeks now. And this morning as I sit here by myself, I'm very aware how, how lonely it could be if all you're looking at are the four walls, day after day. And, you know, let's face it, we could all go a bit stir-crazy. The good news is, there is one who cares about us, one who will never leave us or forsake us, and that's Jesus. And as we take communion this morning, I just want to read this. It's from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23, and it says, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And you know, part of the promise is that because of Jesus' death, we have and we can have an amazing relationship with Almighty God. We can be brought right back into that right relationship through faith in Jesus Christ. And what Jesus promises is for those who follow him, he will never leave them or forsake them, that he will send his Holy Spirit to be with us. And if you've got the Holy Spirit, you've got Jesus and you've got the Father. So this morning, you might be feeling lonely, but believe me, you're not alone. So as we take the bread and the wine, let's just remember Jesus and all that he's done for us. Father, I just thank you for, for Jesus' sacrifice for us, that he came and he lived and he died and he rose again and gave us the opportunity to come into a right relationship with you. And Father, this bread represents his broken body. 
and we thank you that he was willing to give his sacrifice that we might live. Father, I thank you that Jesus was willing to go onto that cross and die the most awful death and pay that price, the highest price that was possible, that we might be cleansed of our sin and brought into an unbreakable relationship with you, Lord, through the blood that was poured out as his sacrifice. Father, we just receive this this juice now that represents that blood and represents the new covenant between you and us. Thank you, Lord. Amen. God bless you. Are you hurting and broken within? Overwhelmed by the weight of your sin? Jesus is calling. Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was brought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. is calling bring your sorrows and trade them for joy from the ashes a new life is born Jesus is calling oh come to the altar the Father's arms are open Yeah.
Father's arms are open wide Forgiveness was brought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ something very powerful um, and, and beautiful about this song that we're singing. Do you know there's a, a verse in the Bible where Jesus says these words, he says, come to me all you who are weary and heavy laden, heavy burdened, and I will give you rest for your soul. And what Jesus is doing here is he is inviting us to come with the things that weigh us down, the burdens are you weary? This isn't talking about a physical tiredness. We all know what that feels like. And maybe right now that's, that's how you're feeling. But this is, this is a weariness that's way beyond a physical tiredness. This is a deep weariness in your soul. From the burdens and the, and the struggles and, and the, the heartache, some of, some of the deep pain that maybe you've walked through or are walking through. Jesus says, I want you to come to me with that. Give it to me because I want to give you rest for your soul. What a phenomenal exchange, which is why we sing, oh, what a saviour. Oh, what a saviour. Isn't he wonderful that we have the opportunity this morning? You might say to me about how, Sarah, how? I can't give you a theory. I, I can't. This isn't something you can learn in your head. But I am going to pray for you right now. And, and my prayer is that you come to the place, as this song says, where you're at the end of yourself, because it's actually only at that place where you're able to receive the life transforming gift of grace and love and truth for you. And so right now I'm praying, Father, everyone that is, is with me today, that's watching wherever they are in their homes, I pray for a supernatural um, exchange to take place where you relieve them of the weariness and the burdens that they're carrying and exchange it for your life, for the freedom that Jesus, you gave to give us. I thank you that this isn't airy-fairy, this isn't hope and just, just a, a hope, just, just a vain hope, but this is truth that we build our lives on. We're going to sing again, oh, what a saviour, oh, what a saviour. Come on, let faith rise within you today. Let faith rise within you. Jesus is worthy. He's wonderful. He's wonderful. I, I haven't, there's no one else in my life like Jesus. Jesus alone satisfies. He alone. Thanks, Dave. Oh, what a saviour. Isn't he wonderful? Isn't he wonderful? Sing. Sing hallelujah. Christ is risen. Bow down before him. Bow down before him. Oh, for, for he is Lord
Yeah, wonderful. Great. Yeah, wonderful. Do you know, um, at the moment, we are joining with thousands of other Christians across the world in praying, your kingdom come, Lord Jesus. Of course, this is part of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. And so at the minute, we are in the middle of 10 days of prayer. Um, and so we are joining together. This is across the world, um, a prayer movement. And, and at Harbour Church, we're a part of that. And, and if you um, receive our emails, and, and, and you can do that again. You can find out all information about the church, go onto our website. You can subscribe to our emails. You'll know there's a lot of prayer, um, extra prayer stuff that's going on through our Zoom meetings. Um, and, and also, we're encouraging people to download the Thy Kingdom Come prayer app. Um, I've done that and I'm following it every day. So you're not too late to do that. I think we're on day four already. You can, you can download the app and you can join in with all of that. So we're having extra prayer gatherings at the minute. And I just really want to encourage you to um, be a part of that. And if you're not a part of Harbour Church, that's okay. Right where you are. And, and the challenge really of Thy Kingdom Come is that we take time to pray, Holy Spirit, would you come and do a deep work in my life? But also the prayer is, Holy Spirit, would you reveal the love of God to those who don't yet know Jesus? So we want to encourage you to be a part of that at the minute. Um, Gareth's going to bring God's word to us right now. And, um, and so let's look forward to that. Thanks, Gareth. Over to you. Well, it's been a fantastic to be able to share God's word with you today. And I'm just uh, really aware of the great privilege that that is. I was, uh, uh, a few years ago, I was um, asked to drive um, the minibus for a bunch of people who were doing the Three Peaks Challenge. Dave was one of them. And uh, I remember uh, getting to, we, we uh, started with Ben Nevis and then we started in the uh, middle of the afternoon, I think. And, and then once they'd done that, we drove down to Scarfield Pike and uh, we arrived at about, I don't know, midnight or one in the morning or something like that. And uh, so all of those that were climbing, uh, not me, of course, I was just driving, but all of those that were climbing had to climb Scarfo Pike in the middle of the night. And uh, so they all had head torches to light their way. They also, uh, I think, had a guide with them to show them which way they were going to go. And um, are you looking at me because of the microphone? <laughs> Eat it. Sorry about that. Uh, so we were, we were, um, uh, they were climbing and they were obviously using head torches and had a guide and all of this sort of thing. And it reminded me of that verse uh, we read in uh, Psalm 119. I hope it's going to come on the screen. It says, uh, thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. I'm quoting the, the old translation there. Your word is a lamp for my feet and a light for my path, and I was—I'm just reminded how important it is for us to have uh, Jesus as our guide at this time, because there are many people who are feeling really uncertain. There are many people who don't know what the future holds. None of us really know what the future holds at the moment. But there are some of us who are feeling really um, unsure of what is before us. And in a sense, this morning, I just want to share with you this if we follow Jesus we know where we're going this time of year is uh, the time of year when I used to work on the farm and grew up on the farm this time of the year is the time we start to make silage silage is basically fermented grass uh, that we store until winter and feed the cows in the winter and this is the time of year where silage making starts and I've noticed a few people already in the last two or three weeks have begun, but lots of people this week will begin to really do that. And it involves cutting grass, letting it wilt for a day maybe, and then uh, putting it into storage uh, with some, some uh, chemicals to accelerate the fermentation process. And that's what goes on. And for a farmer, they will have been preparing for this for weeks. They'll have been cleaning out the storage area, however they store 
Uh, they'll have been getting the machinery ready. They'll have been uh, making sure everything is ready to go. But here's the thing for a farmer. He is never certain of the date he can start making silage. There's no certainty because he's waiting for the weather. He's waiting for the grass to be at its correct level of sugars and all, and they get all sorts of tests done to tell you which date's going to be the best date. But then you wait for the weather. And this morning, if there's any message I've got, it's for us, is to get ready and wait. How do we react to uncertainty? We're ready, but we wait for God. And so there's a couple of things I want to share with you this morning about how am I going to react in the uncertainty, whatever that is, whether that's now or in the future, the uncertainty before me. I don't know what I'll be doing. I don't know when, I can, when we can go back to church or when I can go back to work or whether I can meet my family and my friends. How do I react to uncertainty? Well, the first thing is this, we trust God, we've seen that verse on the screen. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. If I'm following the guide, then I'm going to go in the right direction. And if he says wait, it's time to wait. But if he says go, it's time to go. And if I'm uncertain, then I follow somebody who knows. And that's the way it is with Jesus. You know, um, There are so many at the moment who are uncertain about the way. And if we're following Jesus, then we can be certain. Don't put your trust in someone else who doesn't know the way. You know, uh, uh, Jesus said something about don't follow blind guides. There are many people in our nation at the moment who have loud voices, but they're as uncertain about the future as we are. They know as little about what's going to happen in the next few weeks as we do. And, and I see on the media people saying one thing and then saying the opposite the next day because they don't know any better than we go. know. I hear people say, you know, uh, a few weeks ago the media were saying to the government, when, what's the plan for coming out of lockdown and being really impatient? And then the moment a plan was published, they start to be Uh, Oh, we're moving too quickly. And so there's nobody that really knows the way. And the key is this, we put our trust in Jesus. Not just for this circumstance, but for every circumstance of life. Whether we're in lockdown or not, whether we are uh, 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 struggling with the future, we just need to say, I'm going to follow the one who knows the way. Look to the word of God, that verse in... in, uh, in Psalms says, your word uh, is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Read the right book. If you're uncertain about the future, maybe you're reading the wrong thing. The second thing that I wanted to share with you this morning is that we need to get our priorities in the right place. If we want to be certain for the future, if we want to know what is happening, we have to put our priorities in the right place. Because actually... If we're aiming for the wrong thing, if, if our priorities are wrong, then we don't know what the future holds because we're looking at the wrong future. I was, uh, I was uh, when we first, the first week of lockdown, uh, on that morning when, uh, when we heard all those announcements made, we got some of the leadership team together, as many as could be in the room, and we started to say, what are we going to do? Uh, for church over these next weeks. And the very, very first thing we did is to say, what are our values as a church? What is most important to Harbour Church? Those are the things that we need to find a way to do. Those are the things that we have to uh, navigate and continue to do. It will be in a different way, but they are the most important things for me. And in a sense, that's the question we have to ask of ourselves. What is the most important thing to me that I need to keep at this time, that I need to maintain at this time? What is your priority? And number one priority for every one of us, as far as I'm concerned, whether we know Jesus or not, is that we sort out our eternal future. Because it's one thing to have our priorities right here for the moment But it's another thing to be storing up, as Jesus says, treasures in heaven for ourselves. You know, this pandemic has brought many people clarity about what is important. People are saying, the things that I've been doing for a long time 
I don't want to do anymore because I understand that those things are not so important. And we're getting uh, the, the reality of, of the most important things. And that for you, you will have had that experience yourself. You'll be understanding the things that you've done for a long time and you don't want to go back to doing because you've realised they didn't really matter at all. And other things which you perhaps didn't concentrate so much on before, you'll be focused on now. Because you realised your priorities. And I want to make this challenge to you this morning. Make your highest priority your eternal future. And there are many people, Christians included, who don't make that the highest priority. What am I investing myself in? What is my highest priority? Because here's the truth. If my focus is on heaven, then the things of that are going on around us take a less they they impact me less i can be struggling and in difficulty but if i focus my eyes on jesus then i the impact the the circumstances don't change but the impact that they have on me the way i react to those circumstances is different because if i know my future home is heaven then I build for that and I lay up my treasure in heaven rather than trying to hang on to everything I have in this temporary world. If I had no hope for the future, if I did not have a hope of heaven, I know that my reaction to this crisis would be different. But the key is I do have that hope of heaven. And here's the challenge, if you don't have that hope yet, if you have not yet understood what it means to have a hope for the future, you can have that. We put our trust in Jesus. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. Those of us that have put our trust in him to cleanse our sin, to, to, in faith we believe in him and he makes us his children. And this morning my challenge to all of us, and especially to those who've never done that, is to is to come bit to Jesus and say, I'm putting my trust in you for my salvation, for my hope, for the future. And that means getting, our, getting ourselves in the right place. I spoke before about getting ready. You know, when we're getting ready to make silage as a farmer, we're preparing. We're cleaning out uh, 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 the storage area. That means getting rid of the muck of last year. You know, when we come to Jesus, we're saying, God, would you clean me out? Jesus, come and clean me out. Come and live in me. We're saying, I can't deal with this sin myself. God, forgive me. Father, forgive me for my sin. And we put our trust in Jesus. Just really as I draw to a close, this message can be summed up in a way in four words. Get ready. And wait. You know, when we're on the farm, we're ready, but we're waiting for the right moment of weather to go. And, uh, you know, that may be happening this week. Some farmers will be saying, the forecast looks good. Let's harvest this week. But here's the thing for us as Christians. We're saying, I'm saying to you, get ready and wait. Get yourself in the right place with God and wait until he leads you wherever he leads you. When we're dealing with uncertainty, we trust God. When we don't know the future, we trust God. We're living in a time when people are looking at the circumstances around us and their reactions are very different. Some people are reacting with huge caution. Other people are really gung-ho and they're already out there and... Uh, and that makes some of us feel uncomfortable. And the challenge of the different reactions is to know what is the way that I react to what God says to me. Moses sent 12 spies out when the people of Israel were coming out of Egypt and they'd been rescued from Egypt and they were moving to the promised land. Um, Moses sent 12 spies out to spy the land. And uh, they all went, the Bible says, to the same places. They all saw the same things, but 10 of them came back 
with a bad report and they said, it's too much for us to conquer this land. The future, we need to go back to Egypt. We cannot do it. And two came back and they said, we can certainly do it. We can certainly take the land. And Joshua and Caleb were people that knew what it meant to trust Jesus. They were people that they didn't look at the circumstance and say, we are unable. They knew that if they put their trust in God, he would lead them. He would protect them. He would take them to a safe place. And so the key for us this morning is to be ready. And I'm not really talking about you know, lockdown and whether we come out of lockdown or what I'm talking about. Am I ready for heaven? Have I put my trust in Jesus? Am I getting my priorities right and putting my trust in him and building, for, uh, my, building treasures in heaven? I can say with certainty, if you've not yet met G- Jesus, there's no get ready and wait. There's a go now. Because Jesus has already done the work for us. He has already made the way for salvation for us. We need to just put our trust in him right now and say, God, I'm coming to you for my salvation. And that's my challenge to you this morning. And make that your prayer. God, I'm coming to you. Make me one of your children. Forgive me my sin. But for all of us, whether we've been Christians a long time or a short time, This is the opportunity for us to get ready. While we're in lockdown, while we're in this place, let's say, I'm going to prepare for the moment when I can go and be free to do what I want now. In fact, that moment may be now. We've been seeing, you know, people coming to our Alpha course this week. We've been seeing all sorts of amazing stuff happening in people's lives uh, through this period where God is speaking to people, God is bringing revelation to people. This week, we're in this week of, in this 10 days of prayer. We're praying that God would do something in us and other people. And, and let's be ready for that. I've just written in my notes here, don't put off cleaning the silage clamp. That's the place where we store the, the, the grass, where it ferments, where it gets ready. Before we put the silage in, we have to clean it out. And in a sense, that's what we ask Jesus to do. Come and clean my heart. Get rid of the sin. But I've also put, don't uh, put off sharpening the blades of the mower. Don't put off getting yourself sharp, ready for what God has called you to do. As Christians, we look to Jesus to light our way. For that group who were climbing Scarfell Pike in the middle of the night, they had their head torch, they could see a few feet in front, but they're relying on somebody to guide them, somebody to lead them. And for us as Christians, we're relying on Jesus to lead us and to guide us. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you that you are our guide, that you lead us day by day, that you uh, uh, are, are, are going before us. And when we look to the future of this moment, we are uncertain, but we are certain that we can follow you. Father, I pray you'd help us to trust you for our future, that you hold our future in your hands and that you have the best thing for us. Father, I pray you'd help us to get right priorities and to be building for the kingdom of heaven rather than this kingdom on earth. Father, I pray you'd help us with that. We need your help. I pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Dave's going to lead us as we sing, and I've forgotten the song that we're going to sing. Your love never fails, never gives up. Higher than the mountains that I face. Higher than the mountains that I faced. Stronger than the power of the grave. Constant in the trial and the change. One thing remains. Yes, one thing. Yeah.
fantastic song for us to be finishing on today as Gareth has brought us that timely message that brilliant reminder that higher than anything anything we face one thing remains and that is the love of God we're we're just going to sing this chorus again your love never gives up on me never gives up on me let this be the song that we sing throughout the week in fact all the songs we've sung this morning great songs But let us leave this time together with this confidence that we we sing about in this song. This one thing I'm confident in life, in death, whatever, God, your love is with me. Of course, this song comes from those verses that we read in Romans 8. Can anything separate us from the love of God? No. In all things, because of Christ Jesus, we are more than conquerors because we know the one who loved us. We began this service an hour ago talking about that we need a personal revelation, that we are loved by God. And here we are finishing now. hour later by saying God it's your love your love is central to everything your love is my priority let's just sing this again God your love never fails your love never fails never gives up never runs out on so good just just fantastic yeah well we are drawing this time together to a close now you know, I was thinking because we finish each um, service online by reminding you that we can um, worship God through our giving um, and, and you know I was thinking as Gareth was talking 
he was talking about our priorities. And, and Jesus talks about building treasure in heaven. And, and that's within the context of where we're giving our finances to as well. So as you consider your giving, and um, we want to thank so many of you who have adapted really fast to um, the fact that we're not able to meet and put our money into a basket like this. Um, many of you have adapted and, and you've signed up to give online. Thank you for that. Um, but, you know, this is just our way of honouring God and worshipping him and saying, God, you are my priority. So we always want to encourage you and pray God's blessing on you as you do that. God is so faithful. He is our provider. I love within the Lord's Prayer, of course, after we pray, your kingdom come, your will be done. We're recognising God today, would you give me my daily bread? And God just wants to um, provide for us. We can know him as our provider. So our prayer is that you would know that at this time as well. Well, thank you for joining us. Thank you for being with us throughout this time. Who are you going to call? Who are you going to text? Who's going to be your after church chat? Um, yeah, and, and biscuits. I think this is the first week. I think the, yes. Come on, Lottie. I need, I need my biscuits. Just lob them at me. Lob them at me. Look at that. Biscuits. I had these biscuits last week. I've brought them again today. My mug is here somewhere, um, but we won't worry about that. You know what my mug is. So, um, so here we go. I'm going to open the biscuits. I'm going to just start eating straight away. Um, it's all very crackly probably now through the microphone. And everyone's going to be going, ah, stop right now. There you go. Mmm, that's a nice biscuit. That's a nice biscuit. Now the question is, can I eat the whole pack? Yes. <laughs> I'll leave that for you to guess and decide. Biscuits or cake, biscuits or cake, biscuits or cake, biscuits. I think even I, sorry, I'm now talking with my mouth full. That's proper rude, isn't it? I think even I might do a biscuit shout out. So, um, John Dean, you can look forward to that. Not sure how the creativity will flow, but somehow, however, if I, if I eat too many, I won't remain in these white jeans, will I? So I suppose I need to think about that. Hey, listen, God bless you. I'm into waffling now, and you're all going, shut up, Sarah. Um, thank you for joining us. Really looking forward to seeing you again next week. And just have a blessed week. May God bless you. May he keep you. May you know his favour and his grace on your lives. And let's keep praying. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. Amen.
was on that old cross Jesus suffered and died To pardon and sanctify me To the old rocky cross I will never be true It's shame and reproach that me Call me someday to my home far away when his glory forever I share. So I cherish the old. Yeah.